This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we have a abandoned repeater site workday. After a severe ice storm, trees were down everywhere, and we couldn't even get into the site. So we have some cleanup to do this week on El Cara Ham Radio. Hello folks, this is Chris KY4CKP and uh, we're up here at our secondary abandoned repeater site and uh, one of our first main visits uh, after the big ice storm we had this winter and uh, well the sign may give you an indication uh, we definitely had some trees and things coming down here on top of this uh, this mountain and in fact this main driveway that we use uh, there's a pretty good sized tree that's got it blocked off so that's part of what we're going to be doing today is there's a number of down trees and limbs We're gonna to need to clear some stuff and uh, check on the repeater all the things we normally do but uh, Yep, that's just part of it. You know, we just have to maintain the sites maintain access to the sites so we're gonna uh, Come in KY4 BDP Brian's gonna come in on the other side show some of the down trees and damage that way fortunately none of our equipment really got hurt but uh, it's really just sort of access to the site. So I'm gonna get, get past this tree. We'll uh, bring you folks right back. So we have this down tree. See, it snapped off pretty low on the trunk there. Uh, and then we've got pretty clear up through here. Still quite a bit of trash. The, uh, the owner has removed a few more things and we're gonna keep working on this. And it gets better. Every trip, of course, this last year has been a challenge, of course. Look at those trees. Normally, you can drive right under those, but not right now. So, uh, we'll have to clear out quite a few things. But overall, it looks like they have removed some things. I know it's hard to tell. <laughs> there used to be a lot more right here. They've taken some stuff out of there. A couple more cars are gone, things like that. And uh, we'll do some more work today. And now that the weather's getting better, we'll just continue coming in and doing work. Yeah. Fortunately, those little limbs weren't big enough to take out our power. That was nice. So, we're going to check on things, and uh, we'll bring you folks back later. Well, as Chris was showing you uh, on the main entrance to the site, tree down we couldn't even come in that way this is coming in what we sometimes call the alternate way this is on the uh, small little gravel road and you can see these trees have been snapped off at the very top so much ice uh, had accumulated on these trees uh, tree down over there in the in the background we have some more trees just snapped right in two right here and this is the alternate way to get into the site and there's no way to drive in this way either so we've got to clean up all of these trees that you see down. And so we had a pretty good crew out there this day. Uh, Chris, myself, uh, AC4DM, KK4JPX, KK4KTV, WX4RC. I think I've got everybody there. But uh, we had uh, chainsaws, uh, electric chainsaws. We had uh, a katana uh, saw, which will come into the uh, video a little bit later. Uh, we had a sawzaw that AC4 brought. Sawzalls are great for so many different things. And as you can see, as I walk in, these trees are either just, you know, bent all the way over or are snapped off in half. And uh, <laughs> you wouldn't think after so much ice, this many trees would literally be ha have fallen over right where we uh, used the roads to get in. But because we had cleared so much, we, we figured what had happened was the trees that were normally protected were no longer protected, and so the ice and snow and any wind eventually just toppled them over. Here's a big pine tree that toppled over. We had uh, this one slated to, to come down, but uh, it came down for us. Now, this is looking at the tree that Chris was showing you from the other direction. You can see it is 90 degrees. 
And then we have other trees over here in this corner that we still have to clear out to get them away from the guy lines snapped off in half. But this was our big project, this tree right here. It took quite a bit of work to get this guy because it was snapped off at a 90 degrees high enough that it was tough to get up there where we could actually cut it down. But uh, we'll show uh, getting out the, uh, the longer saw and making short work of that. Another tree down, that one was already dead, but it was snapped. There's the other part of that tree that had fallen over. So uh, Mr. Witsack here is going to uh, go to work on one of the trees we had already felled, and uh, we're using one of those uh, uh, battery-powered chainsaws. They're great for this sort of thing when you only have about a six inch or less tree or limb. AC40M's got the sawzaw going there and uh, taking care of a lot of the branches, and then we just hike them over the hill. On this property, um, the owner has given us permission to just move a lot of this junk, and in this case, the tree and debris over the hill. So not only are we cutting branches and trees, but we're also hiking down the hill to get them out of the way and so forth. So here's AC40M using the Sawzaw to get these limbs off so we can lighten the load as we cut this into manageable sections. For a fellow who uh, is getting up there in age, he works just as hard as anybody else, probably harder for, than some of us. <laughs> Here we've got uh, KY4 CKP. He's got the Katana saw blade. Uh, uh, this is one of the uh, saws that I have in my collection, and he's going to make pretty short work of this tree trunk. What's great is, is those electric chainsaws aren't really great past six inches. This was getting right up towards the maximum, and we also wanted to utilize this saw, and it is cutting in both directions. It's one of the reasons why it is so uh, useful for these kinds of projects, and because it's longer, it gives you quite a bit of leverage. Uh, Chris is just using one hand here, but if you put two hands, two arms into it, Again, it makes pretty short work of these trees. So as you can see, that didn't take very long at all. And then we just got to hike these uh, sections off down the hill. Here we have KK4JPX using the same saw, but you can see this is the 90 degree bent uh, broken tree. And we have to get pretty high up on this tree so that we can, uh, again, cut it into sections and remove it. And so we're removing some branches here, but we're also going to be using the same saw to get higher up on this tree where it had uh, come over at a 90 degree. So he's making short work on some of those limbs. Here's looking at the tree once again, and you can see that bend up there. Well, that's about eight feet up, and we didn't have a, uh, a ladder with us, so we were going to use the long katana saw to get up there and cut that enough. KY4 CKP is just out of frame there on the right-hand side, but he's twisting that, uh, that trunk so that we can snap it hopefully once we get enough of a cut into that bend. And so we've made several cuts and then uh, he's uh, trying to leverage the trunk there towards the camera to kind of break it. Uh, we also were trying to be safe at the same time. So you don't want, you don't, sometimes you don't know how these trees are gonna fall, certainly with the amount of weight that we're talking about. This one had enough bushy branches, it probably wasn't gonna be too dangerous, but still you wanna be very careful. KK4JPX going to town on that uh, saw once again. You can see it's about eight feet up. So it's uh, that long saw really came in handy on a number of the uh, trees that we had to cut up. We ended up cutting down and or cutting into sections and removing about seven or eight of these trees that were blocking our access from both directions uh, coming into the abandoned repeater site. And remember, when we do a work day, we're checking on power, we're checking the equipment. And sometimes this is also what you have to do. You have to clean up around the site if you have these types of trees and obstructions. And if you wonder what goes into maintaining a repeater site, this is part of it. Go thank your club, whoever's, your, whoever's repeater you're using, go thank them for all the work that they put into. And volunteer some time from time to time uh, when they go out on these work days to maintain those repeaters. So eventually we get into the shack to check on the power. This is solar powered uh, a repeater station. Everything is looking great. We've got good voltage. The solar panel that we put up on the tower is working out perfectly. Really, really happy with the, uh, the overall setup here. And uh, one day we'll get mains power, but right now we're just running on solar and have been for about the last uh, four or five, six months. So we're pretty chuffed, but we've got everything cleared out, and now we can begin to do some tower maintenance as the weather starts to warm up. Coming up on El Cara Ham Radio, we begin the installation of what we hope to be internet access at our main repeater site. 
and this will help facilitate future projects that require some internet. Stay tuned.